Well, religious faith is often considered old-fashioned and irrelevant in modern society. Why do Christians believe God exists and that there is life after death? And how can we effectively share our beliefs with those that don't believe in God? We're joined today by Schaefer Parker. He's a retired pastor and a contributor with Faith Beyond Belief Ministries in Calgary. Uh, welcome to Birch City News. Uh, Schaefer, so great to have you on today. Thank you, Jeanette. It's great to be here. Awesome. So can you maybe first of all tell us what Faith Beyond Belief Ministries is all about? Well, I can. We're, we're thought of as an apologetics organization, but there are a number of those in the world. And thank God for every one of them. Don't misunderstand me. Nevertheless, what we hope to offer, uh, and, and this is really our main reason for existence, we want to help ordinary Christians uh, engage as ambassadors for Christ, in effective conversations explaining their faith and uh, explaining why people should believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Awesome. Okay, so I would suppose that one of the most common questions that you've been asked or that skeptics maybe ask is, how do you know that God exists? So how do you answer this question? You know, anytime I'm asked that question, I'm old enough to have grown up in, in, in churches where we sang hymns every Sunday. And uh, there's a, an old hymn that says, uh, the chorus goes, he lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives? He lives within my heart. And so that, that, but I understand that while that is adequate for a person who's already a believer, it's more than adequate because you have the assurance of God's Holy Spirit that, that he is dwelling within your heart, that is Christ himself. And, and we have that, but, but for the people outside, they need something else because they don't have, they're not believers and they don't have the Holy Spirit yet. And, uh, and, and, and so we need to be able to give some, something else. So there are a number of ways we can approach this. One of the uh, classical ways is to approach it philosophically, and one of the one of the, one of the quickest, uh, I think, solutions to the question "Is there a God?" comes from the law of cause and effect. That is to say, every effect has to have a cause, and the cause has to be greater than the effect. For example, if I'm standing at a, at home plate on a baseball diamond and a ball comes whizzing past me at 100 miles an hour, then I know that that there was an effect greater than that. That whatever it is, 60 feet away or fit, I forget the exact distance, but, but on the pitcher's mound, the pitcher has been moving his arm faster than 100 miles an hour. That ball had to leave his, his hand at maybe 120 miles an hour in order to reach the, 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 the home plate at, at 100 miles an hour. And so you've got a cause, the pitcher, you've got the effect, the ball whizzing past me on the plate, over the plate at 100 miles an hour. And so you can see then that the cause has to be greater than the effect and so forth. Now, we look at a universe and we say, wow, does it have a beginning? Well, the Bible says it has a beginning. And the vast majority of astrophysicists now uh, actually kind of agree with something called the Big Bang. And the very idea of the Big Bang is that the universe had a beginning, that it started from essentially nothing. And so you've got the effect that is the existence of the universe. Well, what would cause such a, an effect? Well, it has to be an uncaused cause, that would be, as a Christian, I would say God, as a, as a believer, I would say God, and that he is greater than the universe, that he has more power than we see in the universe, or else he could not have created the universe, more intelligence than we see naturally involved in the precision with which the universe is held in balance and all the, op, all the uh, uh, activities of the universe taking place in perfect harmony. All these things uh, only exist because there is a cause uh, that is greater than the effect. And that cause would be, from my perspective, God. Now, that's one way of looking at it. But there's maybe another more um, personal way of looking at it. And that would be to ask yourself, what do we know about God through Jesus Christ? And why should we pay attention to him? Because he rose from the dead. Now, when a man uniquely predicts his resurrection and then carries it out, and you begin to investigate all of the uh, arguments against such a thing, uh, people saying, well, Maybe he was just, uh, maybe he just swooned. Uh, he was in a coma for a, a couple of days and then recovered uh, after being hung on the cross. As a matter of fact, all the evidence points to the reality that he died on that cross, that they checked very carefully. He was, he was totally dead, really and truly dead when he was buried in Joseph of Arimathea's tomb. But three days later, he came back to life. Now, when a person does that, 
then his words have a great deal of authority. Whatever he says after that, we pay attention to. Whatever he said before that, we pay attention to because of his resurrection from the dead. Uh, some have said, and, and, and uh, those who study these things carefully uh, have pointed out that, the, first of all, the existence of Jesus Christ is now the best attested fact of ancient history to the point that uh, even, even skeptics and, and, and atheists uh, who have really studied the matter no longer deny the existence of Jesus Christ in history. And then the resurrection becomes just as well attested as his existence when you pay any attention to what's really going on. And so we need to, we need to note then that we have Christ who's risen from the dead, who says that he's come from God the Father, that he's returning back to God the Father, and that someday he's coming again. There, there's every reason in the world to believe that God exists. I'll mention one other thing, and that is that modern science, um, modern science has kind of disproved most of atheism's, uh, most of atheism's cherished uh, beliefs. And the reason I say that is because uh, what we've discovered, of course, using modern science is that the universe does have a beginning, as I've mentioned, but that there has to be more than mere materialism behind its creation because of the intelligent design that has now become so obvious to, to any scientist, again, who's really who really wants to see what, what we've discovered. Uh, in 1953, the existence of DNA was discovered. And since then, one discovery has been piled on another so that we now understand that DNA is an information system far more sophisticated, uh, far more complicated than any kind of programming that, that mere human beings have ever been able to accomplish. And, uh, and, and so what we're looking at then is an information system that requires intelligence to have created it to begin with, it could not happen, simply could not happen accidentally. Uh, the information system that, that guides the construction of even the, the, mo the uh, proteins that make up our molecules in, in our bodies and, and pass them, passes them on to the next generation and so forth. It's just unbelievable. Uh, really quick, I did want to ask you too, especially with the past two years, the pandemic, everything that's been going on, are you finding that more and more people are asking these questions now and they are kind of coming to you with these questions and looking for answers? There's no question about that, Jeanette. One of the most interesting things is that I've experienced over the, for almost three years after I retired from full-time pastoral ministry, for about three years, I was the regular preacher at a church in the Sundry area, just north of, and a little bit west of, of Calgary. And, um, and so I preached there almost every Sunday and right, and I was already preaching there when COVID struck and the lockdowns followed and and, and all of that. And within six months following the existence of the lockdowns, we began to discover an extraordinary thing. Young couples were starting to come to this church. Now, the church I was serving is out in the country. It's not easy to find. It's uh, You have to really kind of look for it or get someone else to show you where it is to even get there. And yet here come these young couples with little children and you start talking to the, the parents and you discover that, well, I'll, I'll just mention one in particular, but there were two or three that were like this. Uh, but the, one, one fellow said, look, my wife was kind of a believer. I was not a believer at all. In fact, he'd been involved uh, in, in a high level of business and, and, uh, and, and, they, and they moved out to the country to kind of get away from some of the stresses of, of uh, modern life in the big city. But nevertheless, he said, I was not much of a believer, but the moment the lockdown occurred, it somehow came to my mind that there was a spiritual component, that this was an attack on something uh, that we had all kind of lived with, but not really acknowledged up till this time. And he said, I began to search for some answers to my spiritual questions. He said, some of the answers I found online, and he mentioned in particular that he, had, he became uh, very enamored with John MacArthur, who's a well-known uh, pastor and preacher from Southern California. And so he listened to MacArthur quite a bit. And he said, that made me want to find a church of my own. And so we started looking for a church and we found this place and now we're looking for, for more. And they found Christ. And then another couple came. Uh, they, they had been living together for several years in a kind of you know, they said, well, we sort of made our own marriage in, in private. We, uh, we made some commitments to one another, but we were never registered as a married couple. And now we want to live for Jesus. And, and we understand if we don't live for Jesus, we will sort of not live for anything meaningful. And so I was privileged to, to uh, baptize one of them and then, then marry them both. And, and uh, it was just an amazing. And we've seen that in so many cases. Uh, uh, we saw that over the nearly two years of the lockdown where I was involved there. And so it's, it's amazing what's happened, you know, in some cases.
Okay, so I understand that you have an apologetics conference coming up this weekend in Calgary, which people can attend either in person or online. So who are some of the speakers and who should attend and why? So we're going back to our roots with this, this idea of helping people to learn to be bold in talking about their faith with other people. And so it, we're calling the conference a faith worth sharing. And we've got some great speakers. Uh, we've got Rebecca Manley Pippert. I think she goes by Becky Pippert now, but uh, we've got Becky Pippert coming, uh, just one of the preeminent sp spokespersons in this very field of being effective in everyday conversations for Christ. And then we've got Jojo Ruba, who is our founder, and he'll be talking about how to effectively share the gospel with people who are uh, committed to the LGBTQ movement, or in some ways, we just have a whole world now where we just kind of casually accept the LGBTQ movement. And the question is, how do we effectively share the gospel with them? Jojo is the master in explaining all of that, and he'll be speaking. And then Dr. Andy Bannister, uh, Logan Gates, and another name that you've probably heard of because he's been one of the preeminent apologists, I think, for the last 40 years or so, Dr. Oz Guinness is going to be speaking at one of our breakout sessions. I wish we could have him as a main speaker this year, but we're grateful that we can get him as a breakout. And so Dr. Oz Guinness, those will be the primary ones. And then we have a number of people uh, from Alberta and from within our organization, uh, including myself, who will be speaking at, at breakout conferences. Mm, sounds so, like a huge conference. It's going to be. It's going to be great. It's, it's a Friday evening, this coming Friday evening, the 29th and all day Saturday, the 30th. And for what it's worth, you can go to the, it's still, it's not too late to sign up on some level because we are, uh, we're both, we're gonna be both live and online. We can have an infinite number of people involved as big as the internet, you might say. And we've been grateful to discover in the last couple of years, as we've been forced to go online, we're now getting people who attend from as far away as Australia, New Zealand, various parts of Europe and the Middle East. So it's been really quite amazing to see how wide our impact is, is, is getting. Let me mention one other thing. If you do register as a result of what you're hearing in this broadcast uh, just now, then we have a little bit of a discount promo. And I want you to listen carefully so you can get, so if you're an individual and you're registering to come to a live conference, you can get a $10 uh, discount for on your registration fee. Or if you're registering online, $5 discount. So here are the two promo codes. To register for live attendance, it needs to be, now in this case, all caps, miracle hyphen live. So just miracle hyphen live, so M-I-R-A-C-L-E hyphen L-I-V, all caps. And if you do that, if you put that in the promo, promo box, you'll get a $10 discount. But if you're going to attend online, just again, miracle hyphen online, and all in caps, miracle hyphen online, and you'll get a $5 discount for attending online. Thanks so much for being with us today, though, Schaefer. Appreciate having you on. Jeanette, it was a pleasure. Thank you.